we are trying to understand oligopoly and this is the last lecture on oligopoly and we'll examine two models one called the kinked demand model and the other one called price leadership model and these models are a theoretical explanation of what we observe in real world situations sometimes we observe that a firm under oligopoly will not change its price even when the costs change. The costs may increase or decrease somewhat, but these firms tend to maintain their price. And the question we ask is, how can we theoretically explain price rigidity, price rigidity in the wake of changing costs? And for this, we have the kinked demand model. This is a diagram of a kinked demand model and, and the demand curve, AR curve is the same thing as the demand curve, has a break or a kink around this point. <clears throat> and what is this point? Suppose this is the existing price level or the price charged by a firm under oligopoly and this is the situation in which this firm finds itself suppose costs increase and the firm wants to increase its price chances are other firms may not follow the suit or may not follow the price increase that this firm has initiated in such a case this firm will lose a significant amount of the market. So if the firm decides to increase the price, it will lose a very large amount of the market share. And so th from this stretch, the demand curve is flatter. Now, if the cost fall, the firm may like to lower the price. But when it lowers the price, other firms to, would like to stay competitive. And what they will do is they will also cut their prices. So when price decrease is initiated by this particular firm, it may not gain a large amount of the market simply because the other competitors will follow the suit. And so <clears throat> if it decides to increase the price, Others may not follow the firm's lead. And when it decides to decrease the price, a lot of them will follow the lead of this firm. And hence, with the price increase, the firm may lose a larger part of the market share. And with the price decrease, the firm may not gain, uh, gain as much market share. And this is how we explain the kink in the demand curve at an existing price the demand curve is flatter above this existing price and it is steeper below this existing price now if you have a kinked demand curve we can draw the marginal revenue curve which is based off this kink demand curve and what we find is because March average revenue or the demand curve is downward sloping, the marginal revenue curve will lie below the AR curve. And what we find is at this point of kink, if you drop this point to the MR curve, what you find is for a certain stretch on the vertical axis, the MR curve becomes vertical. So the MR curve now, because we have a kink in the demand curve of this firm, the MR curve is downward sloping up to this point, and then it becomes vertical and again is downward sloping. So this is the shape of the MR curve when we have a kink in the demand curve. In this diagram, we bring in the marginal cost curves. Why? Because marginal cost curves are needed to show equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. And suppose to start with, the original marginal cost curve is MC1. And we know based on this MC1 and MR, we know E1 will be the equilibrium point. 
What will be the price charged by this firm under oligopoly? You just take this equilibrium point to the demand curve and we know this will be at the kink and you bring it to the vertical axis and this will be the price charged by the firm when the marginal cost curve is MC1. Suppose in the next time period, marginal cost curve increases or moves up to MC2 or MC3 and we have respective equilibrium points E2 and E3. Even when we have equilibrium points like E2, E3, you take this point to the demand curve and bring it to the vertical axis and what you find is the price will stay the same. So this is how we explain price rigidity even when costs change, kinked demand. Now let us examine another model called the price leadership model or the dominant firm model. Sometimes we observe the following and this is something you find in the US that in some industry there might be one leader or a dominant firm accompanied by a very large number of very small firms as if they are working under perfect competition and a very good example of this is the banking industry in the US where you find there are very few very large banks and then we have a very large number of small local banks. So how can we explain how prices are set by the leader or the dominant firm in this kind of a market? So let us make some assumptions. We assume that there is one large or a dominant firm in terms of the market share or whatever you may have. Along with that, what we have is a very large number of very small firms and they behave as if they are under perfect competition and therefore are price takers. So how can we explain price setting behavior and how the market is shared between the large and the small firms? And this is what we do and examine through the dominant or the price leadership. So we know there are very large number of very small firms and they behave as if they are under perfect competition and you know how to draw a supply curve for firms under perfect competition and this is the supply curve. This yellow line is the supply curve for firms under perfect competition. We know this is the supply curve for all small firms taken together because they are behaving as if they are under perfect competition. And suppose this is the market demand curve. This black line is the market demand curve for this product which is produced both by the dominant firm as well as very large number of very small firms. Now consider the following. <clears throat> Based on this diagram, the price leadership model, what it will do is, the price, price leader or the dominant firm, what it will do is, it will derive a residual demand curve for itself. So consider a price like this one. At this price, you see that the entire market demand can be satisfied by these small firms. What about at this price? At this price, the small firms are unwilling to sell anything to the market or in other words, this entire market demand belongs to the dominant firm. And based on these two extreme points, we can also draw intermediate points and join them. And what we get is a residual demand curve for the dominant firm or the leader firm. So this line in solid red reflects the demand curve for the leader firm. Once we have figured out the demand curve for the leader firm, we can bring in the marginal revenue and marginal cost curve. And based on that, we can determine equilibrium. So once again, in this diagram, we have the supply curve of small firms. We also have the market demand curve and DL represents the residual demand curve for the leader or the dominant firm. 
Now, based on this DL, we can also derive marginal revenue curve for the leader or the dominant firm. Now, how is price determined in this market? Look at the following. The marginal cost curve for the leader firm is MCL. So what will be the equilibrium point wherever MCL and MRL intersect? So you have this point. You take this point to the demand curve for the leader firm and bring it to the vertical axis. And what you have determined is the price that will be set by the leader or the dominant firm. You take this price to the supply curve of small firms and you drop it here. And what you have determined is the output that will be supplied by these small firms. So we have output that will be supplied by the leader firm. We have output that will be supplied by the small firms. And when you add these two up, these two must equal the total demand at this particular price. So this is how the leader or the dominant firm sets the price. And the small firms take this price as given and do the best they can. And this is how the market is shared between the dominant or the leader firm and these very small firms. And like I said, this kind of price setting behavior we have observed in the case of banking industry. In the US, we have very few very large banks accompanied by very large number of very small local banks. And what happens is these large or dominant banks, they set the rate of interest and that rate of interest is taken as given by these small regional or local banks. And this is how the price or the rate of interest is determined. And based on this rate of interest or the price, the market is shared between the dominant firm and these very small firms. So this completes our discussion of oligopoly. Thank you for your time.